All right, so my name is Joel Brown. I'm the lead developer at Accordance Bible Software, and I'm here to talk to you about this incredible new, brand new feature for Accordance 13, the Targums Word Map. I want to tell you a bit about what the Word Map is and what it lets you do in Accordance and why this is really an amazing, fantastic feature. But um, a couple of caveats. Number one, the Word Map does require Accordance 13, specifically 1303. So if you have version 13, be sure to update to the latest version. The other very important caveat here is one of the aspects of the word map is what you're seeing on my screen right now, which we call the alignment pane. This is a fantastic way to view the data. It unfortunately is not yet ready for public release. So this is going to require version 13.1. Whenever that is available, that'll be a free update to all version 13 users. So in the meantime, I'll show you um, how you can actually view the data. But because it's such a, a cool aspect of the word maps, I wanted to show it off now. Now then, so what is the Targums word map at its core? So it is a word map. This is a new type of database that we're doing in accordance, and it allows us to do word to word to word specific granular perfect alignment of any text to any text as long as they have the same verse. Right now, we're using this incredible project by um, uh, Dr. Lior Gottlieb of bar -Lan University with called the Equivalent Project that has done this word map of all the Targumim with the Hebrew. We'll get to that in a second. But word maps in general, think of them as databases that perfectly align text. We actually hope to, in the future, add more word maps that cover other alignments. Um, and, and any features you see me talking about here about the Targums word map would actually apply to those in the future. So that, that's what a word map is. Well, what are the Targums? So the Targums are the Aramaic translations of the Hebrew Bible. You will recall from your history that the Israelites were taken to Babylon and they were in exile in Babylon for a long time and there they spoke Aramaic. It's one of the reasons why much of the book of Daniel and other parts of the, of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, are in Aramaic. So that was their language and when they were there they still needed a Hebrew text but since they were speaking Aramaic, it was in Hebrew. So just like Spanish and French and German and English all use same characters but different words, Aramaic and Hebrew is sort of like that. It uses similar characters. There are a lot of cognates, words that seem to be the same and may or may not mean the same thing, but of course there's also a lot of differences because it is a different language. So the Targums are extremely important because they are a set of extremely early witnesses to the text that give us more insight into the, the um, Israeli and Hebrew culture, into word meanings, into to uh, things that were added or removed for different reasons. It's just an incredible database of, of, of information. For example, let's say we have a hapax legomena in Hebrew, some word that only ever occurs once, and thus it's hard to understand what that word actually means because all we have is this limited context. Well, maybe we can go to one of the Targums and see, oh, in the Targums, it's this word, and this word actually does have similarities to other words in the Targums, and now we have a lot more insight as to what the Hebrew word means. Now, even if you aren't a... Um, Hebrew or uh, Aramaic speaker, it can still actually be useful. Let me actually pull up the JPS here, and I can see if I look on, uh, um, and actually let's do Hebrew as well, if I pull up something like wind here, a wind from God, and I can see that in my word map down here, and I can immediately see all of the Targum words that align to it, and my instant details can tell me what those words were and their gloss and all the other information. So even if you aren't big into Aramaic, maybe you only do Hebrew, maybe you only do English, this is a set of texts that gave you that much more information as to what the original intended. So it's just a fantastic, really great insight in the Hebrew Bible. That's what the Targums are. But this word map brings it to life. Having these two things combined in to the Targums word map makes this data so much more available and useful to you. So what, what it does, as I said, word maps are a perfect word level, level alignment. I can immediately see here in Genesis 1, Better sheets in the beginning. Here's my Hebrew form. Here are all of the exact forms that were used for that in the Targum Onkelos, Targum Neophyti, Targum Pseudo Jonathan, and the fragmentary Targums. This data also, by the way, includes, if I go down to other sections of it, um, the different manuscripts from Cairo Geniza. It also includes the marginalia to Neophyti. Um, I think if I go to like here we go. Leviticus 1.1, we can immediately see here that here's some Neophyti marginalia as well as Suda Jonathan and Neophyti and all them working together to show me exactly what's added, what's removed, what's changed, what is a different expression. All of that information is immediately visually there. So the word map gives you this precise, 
perfect alignment of the Hebrew Bible and all six of our Targums modules to each other. I don't have to go Hebrew to Targum. I can go Neofiti to Pseudo Jonathan, or I can go uh, all the different Kyrogeniza fragments to the fragmentary Targums, FTP and FTV. Whatever I want to do, it's all there and useful. So the first big use of the Targums is in either cross-highlighting or this word map, this alignment pane. As I said, this alignment pane is only coming in version 13.1, but even if until then, you can pull up a text browser and you can immediately see the actual same data is all there already as your cross-highlighting. So if I have open a normal tab here, so open a Hebrew Bible tab, and I have my Targums open in there, Targum Pseudo Jonathan and Kyrogeniza and uh, the fragmentary Targums, and I get my cross-highlighting already there. So already you can immediately, when reading the text, see how all the words align together. I just like using the alignment pane since I do think it's a nicer visual example. The alignment pane also shows us easy big gaps where they go. So it's just the visual reading, understanding at an immediate glance, knowing how all the words line up, what every word is to every other word, and you can mouse over to see the common uh, alignment. And it's just this incredible immediate insight for the whole text. Right now we finished Genesis through Leviticus, and then within a year or two, we'll also be adding numbers in Deuteronomy to that set. So it's a huge body of data. And from the reading perspective, from the working with the text perspective, you can immediately see how this is so, so useful. But we don't just stop there. In accordance, it's all about taking it further and seeing what else can we do with this. And the word map works incredibly well with one of Accordance 13's new features, the text command. Well, what is the text command? The text command says, go to some other text, do whatever search you want, and then take all of those results and show how they occur or not in your source text. So for example, I can go to my JPS with Strongs and say, where find all the words translated that begin with H. And then I can go to my NAS and say, now let's consider those same translated words and where does my NAS translation differ? Or maybe I want to find everywhere where my ESV with Strongs um, has uh, uh, the word man, but my NIV, GK, actually chose to translate the word Adam instead of man, for example. I can find those translational differences. Well, you can do the same thing now using the word map. You can do those type of searches between the Hebrew Bible and all the Targums or across from each other. Let's do a simple example, okay? I'm here in my Hebrew Bible. You can tell that from this top corner here. I'm going to go to my enter command text, and I'm going to say, let's do a simple example. Let's go to my Targum Onkelos, and let's just find all words, okay? And let's then use the at sign to say bara. What this is saying is, let's just find bara in the Hebrew Bible, 11 times in the book of Genesis, just to keep it simple. But by adding the star, I wanna make sure I only wanna find words that did have an equivalent word in Targum Onkelos. And now I can go to my analysis, customize it, and I can immediately see all of the Targum Onkelos words that came from Hebrew Bible to create bara. We can go further than that though. We can actually do more restrictive searches. Let's go back to my text command and let's again go to Onkelos just because that's what I'm using for now, but it works with any of them. And let's actually find all masculine nouns. So these are all 4,350 masculine nouns in Onkelos that, let's be careful, we're searching Hebrew Bible, that had a representation in the Hebrew Bible. And now that I've done this, I can go to my analysis and I can see all of the Hebrew words that had equivalent masculine words in Onkelos. But we can go even further. I'm actually going to go to the construct here, just keep it clean. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to go text, Hebrew, Targum, Onkelos. Again, masculine noun, okay? But now let's restrict it and let's say that, but my Hebrew text must have a feminine noun there. And immediately it found it. Took no time at all. And we can immediately see here that here is a feminine noun in Hebrew. You can see mine in details at the bottom. But onkelos is a masculine noun. Easy to swap it. Let's just change this to feminine. Let's change this to masculine. 
And now we'll see in Genesis 1, 6, Hebrew Bible had a masculine noun, but this Targum had a feminine noun, for example. We can go even further. Let's change my search text and let's actually start searching um, Suda Jonathan, just for example. By the way, I can run my search and immediately see here. Now, what I'm doing is the same search, same construct, but since my search text is Suda Jonathan, now I'm saying, where was Onkelos feminine, but Suda Jonathan? Was masculine and we can see here two masculine nouns in pseudo jonathan while onclos was feminine but that's actually not the search i'm looking for so i'm going to delete these two and let's do a simple example i want to find all of the additions in pseudo jonathan i want to find whatever pseudo jonathan added to one of the texts so i'm just going to start by displaying all lexical forms in pseudo jonathan but i'm also going to use my text command and say where does the hebrew bible not express it. And we can see here, this Aleph has no equivalent. These words obviously have no equivalent here. This word, ah, my alignment pane implied it's extra, but mousing over and I can actually see this is really still an equivalent to this Hebrew word here. So you see the, 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 the searching gives you these results, but I'm still seeing a lot more, right? Even though Suda Jonathan didn't have a representation in Hebrew Bible, it does have representation in Neophyti. So let's go ahead and eliminate that one as well. Come in here. Go to my Neophyti, Esther Shini, do the same star search with a knot to say I don't want it to have a Neophyti form either. And now we're actually getting some more interesting results here. Now we're seeing sections that are pretty unique across um, uh, just Suda Jonathan. I've immediately found all the additions. I can take these results and do anything I want with them. Maybe I'm going to go to my pie chart and let's look at the um, stem of each of my results. And maybe this, I'll find it fascinating that these are all PLs. I don't know. I'm not the researcher. I'm giving this capability to you. Maybe I want to go to my hits graph and see how these are distributed around the text. And then I can immediately see, whoa, there's a big spike here sort of in the middle. And at the end, let's double click on that, take a look. And I can see, whoa, look at this huge addition that's in Genesis 50, 20 and in Genesis 50, 25. I didn't know that coming into here. But I can see this big added section that is in the data, and you can immediately come to whatever conclusions you have. So th this is just a taste of what you can do. Remember, we're just giving you the capabilities. We've said, here's the alignment. Here's the text command. You figure out what's useful to you. This can be good for insight. Why was this text added? Why was this text removed? Why was this represented in a different way? Why did they use this word instead of this word? Using it for research, find me all of the targums that have this particular stem when they don't have this particular form within this word. All of that is available to you now. And it's this incredible toolbox. And I, for one, I'm just really excited to see what you, the users, are going to do with this in, in a research and in study and in insight and in just learning more.